If your bank hid a data breach for 23 days, executives would face criminal charges. But when OpenAI secretly stored every ChatGPT conversation, including API conversations, we stored those for 23 days without telling anybody. We made a blog post that nobody saw and we called it compliance. In my previous video about leaked OpenAI strategy document and data nightmares, I covered a lot, but this time I want to focus on few details that are very important. And also what we personally in our business are doing and what you can do as well. Let me show you exact timeline OpenAI doesn't want you to see or focus on. On May 13th, at 9 a.m., Judge Ona Wong issues preservation order. And OpenAI, they immediately started to comply with that order, preserving all the conversations. And they admitted it themselves. They didn't tell anybody until 5th of June 2025. That's 23 days of secret data collection. And there are a few things that happened in that time that could be the reason why they kept it secret. But think for a second, when banks have a data breach, they have to notify users within 72 hours. For OpenAI, 23 days. They invent their own rules. Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, who is tweeting all the time, during this 23-day period was not talking anything about security or privacy. Actually, on May 16th, they launched Codex. More importantly, on June 4th, just a day before OpenAI made a blog post about this issue, important law order regarding AI regulations or lack of for 10 years was passed and went to the Senate. In my last video, I had almost like a thousand comments. People are saying like, are you surprised? Other group of people saying like, I'm never using ChatGPT. But the most underlying question has been like, how is this possible? And also, what can you do? Like, how can you actually host LLMs locally on your device and not be tied to OpenAI or fear that your data is going to be leaked? Another important detail is about API users. Because normally, API data is not retained and also not used for training models. However, in this case, your API data for those 23 days and it's ongoing, even today, it's retained indefinitely, unless you have zero data agreements. But here is the thing, to get these agreements is nearly impossible for a small business. Some businesses were requesting it for years without getting any response. You have to email OpenAI sales, and even if you get a response, you have to provide insane amount of data. There is no online process. And if they finally reply to you, they want to know your company size, revenue, use case, and most requests get denied. And the bar that they request to comply and meet their requirements and also information they provide is basically impossible. And only really for huge enterprise clients paying thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to open AI. But here's the thing, all this drama is unfolding. The crazy thing is they wrote this blog post and then Sam Altman made this tweet, but there is no notification on ChatGPT. There is no information. They updated the privacy policy way later. While all of this was happening, OpenAI also increased their lobbying by 600%. It went from 260,000 to 1.7 million. And here's the thing, I want you to mark this date in your calendar. July 4th, Congress in the US is voting on banning any AI regulation for 10 years, while AI spending in big, beautiful bill is projected to cover border security, which means basically surveillance project, defense, also Medicare fraud. So not an investment in actual healthcare, but fraud. Now with all this kind of nuance and detail, the question is, what can you do? And turns out there is quite a lot. The situation right now is basically for any businesses, and this is not just open AI, you have to comply with regulations. GDPR charges 4% of your annual revenue if you don't comply. So yeah, all the businesses that don't have zero data retention and use the open AI API services, they don't comply with GDPR. And I think this is going to be, as always, small everyday businesses, medium-sized businesses, startups are going to be the ones who get them hit. So let's shift the gears. What can you do? For my own community and also projects, first thing that we are doing is removing reliance on open AI models. We don't have zero data retention agreement, neither of the clients do that. And even if we wanted to get that, as I told you, it's probably nearly impossible. So 
moving away from open AI API services, the two best alternatives right now in the market, I would say is Google's Gemini API and traffic. Will those both businesses be hit? Maybe. Will they let you know? We don't know, but chances are that maybe they will just, but you have to keep that in mind. Now, the second, if you don't want to send your data to anybody, you have an option to host AI models on your computer or on your local servers without relying on anybody. For my community, I put together the comprehensive ultimate guide on hosting LLM models on your devices for all the different levels, from the small solopreneurs to the medium size to enterprise size. We basically covered hardware requirements, broke down 12 different platforms and open source projects that you can use today with zero cost and also pros and cons. Because if anybody says to you that it's so easy to just download an LLM model on your computer and off you go, yeah, there's so much more nuance. It's easy to get started, but fine tuning to get actual good results from local models on your machine or your server requires some expertise, experimentation, but I want to share with you the top three platforms for locally hosting AI models in your computer. Number one, open web UI. This thing almost looks exactly like ChatGPT, but your data never leaves your computer. It works offline. I literally use it on flights or when I don't have any internet. And if we experience some sort of apocalypse, that's always just good to have, right? You need to have access to the internet, but a lot of LLMs is just basically distilled version of the internet. So in any case, if you don't have internet, and you have large language model on your computer, it's like having a packaged internet, kind of. Another good thing is that a lot of these locally run LLM models and platforms, they allow you to index your documents locally. No cloud, no surveillance, just you and AI. Open Web UI is the top runner for us because it's very rich in features. It's a large community. But it's not exactly beginner friendly. You still need to have Python. You need to start it maybe in a Docker or your terminal. So there is a little bit of the technical details, but once you do, it's amazing. And also by running open web UI, you can access your large language models on any device. Number two, Cherry Studio. This is a desktop app for Mac, Linux, and Windows. You can switch between multiple models instantly and also compare results. And the funniest thing is Cherry Studios is actually a Chinese platform for democratizing access to AI models. It's a little bit ironic that one of the best locally run platforms is from China, and also one of the probably best open source models, DeepSig, is also from China. It's all kind of crazy how tables flip around. Another great thing, Chair Studio is beginner friendly and provides you one of the easiest setups for MCP. So basically giving tools to your locally hosted LLM models. Number three, anything LLM. This is what you can use for business documents. It has full rack capabilities. It means it can search through all your files and zero external connections unless you enable them. There's also built-in agents and no-code workflows that you can use. They even have white label options for businesses. It's a little bit more like enterprise level, has very good documentation, very good MCP integration. But there's even on all these three, there are more nuances you would consider. So again, in the guide in our community, we break it down in more detail. I personally, I use Mac. So if you want a video on how to set them up on a Mac and what type of local model I choose and how to test models and how to make sure that these models run perfectly, let me know. I can make the video on that too. But look, I'm not going to lie to you. There are pros and cons. There are trade-offs, right? So you really depend on the model that you can run on your machine. You can still run really good models on your laptop, but it's not going to be as easy as using ChatGPT. That, that's why I think ChatGPT is so appealing because it's so easy and fine-tuned and it does perform pretty good. Not always, but for most part. Another thing that I am completely bullish is on building your own AI second brain, which we use Superbase, which could be also locally hosted because it's open source project, but you have to understand that anything that touches internet or other providers is sharing your data, right? And right now, if there is anything that we learned, it's basically that it's a promise to you that data is not going to leave or get deleted. But unless the Supreme Court passes the thing on July 4th or some court judge makes an order, all the data can, everything can be flipped upside down. And I just think it's absolutely crazy that for 23 days, 
complete silence, not letting users know. How is this acceptable? So I think you have two options, maybe three. Use ChatGPT and accept that it might be mass surveillance machine for US government and you have zero privacy. And if you never experience history, what happens, how governments can use data they know about you against you, yeah, then I guess it's fine. The option two is you take care of your privacy, of your business. The compliance is not anymore like a good thing to have. It's literally for businesses your competitive edge. Because even if US Senate passes that there is no regulations on AI for 10 years, you still have to comply with GDPR. If you want to do any type of business in Europe or across the world, really, you still need to comply with both. So if you start looking into your compliance today, I really think that that's going to be the competitive edge for many businesses. And if OpenAI can just like casually hide this information for 23 days, what else do you think they are hiding? Watch this video where I cover leaked strategy document from OpenAI and also go more into details about this court order and what it means for the businesses and who exactly it affects.